While they're a lot cheaper to run, we all know that electric cars are expensive to buy, often far more expensive than comparable internal combustion engined vehicles. That's primarily down to the cost of the lithium ion battery pack found in every single production electric car today. The larger the battery pack, well, the more expensive the car is. And while you can mitigate some of the costs associated with electric car ownership by leasing instead of buying, or rather you can insulate yourself from any potential losses due to battery pack degradation over time, I'm sure many electric car owners would love a way to reduce their lease or finance costs just a little. And now there is, at least in theory, and it doesn't even require you to drive your car. Meet vehicle to grid a technology designed to allow you to use the battery pack in your electric car as an energy storage buffer for the electricity grid. It's a technology that's been around for some time, but for the most part, vehicle to grid has revolved around using electric cars as backup power in the event of an emergency, either using a simple 12 volt mains inverter hooked up to the car's DC to DC converter, like I did in this video, or plugging it into a special two-way vehicle to home or vehicle to grid charging station. As a consequence, it's been most adopted in places like Japan, where the constant threats posed by earthquakes and tsunamis mean that having backup power at a moment's notice is a very good thing indeed. There are even regular drills in some cities across Japan to ensure that local authorities are well versed in getting the power back on using EVs as portable power stations for emergency response centres. But in Europe and other parts of the world, vehicle to grid is now being explored as a way to help smooth out peaks and troughs in electrical grid demand. The idea is pretty simple. You plug your electric car into a home charging station overnight to fill up when electricity is at its cheapest to produce and grid demand is at its lowest. Then you keep your car plugged in when it's not being driven during the day so that the two-way charging station can pull power out of your car's battery pack to help stabilize the grid when demand outstrips supply. From an energy point of view, this system works really well, since it reduces some of the demands on the local electrical grid. But many electric car owners have been worried that letting their car be used in this way would ultimately shorten the life of their car's battery pack. Yet, as a study has just found out in Germany, it's possible for electric car owners to earn money by signing up to vehicle to grid projects and the amount of power transferred every week from car back to electricity grid is so small that it has a really negligible effect on the lifespan of your car's battery pack. So let's go back to October last year, when the Mobility House, NRV, Amperion and Nissan all announced that they'd been collectively approved by the local electrical grid operator in Hagen, Germany, to connect a Nissan Leaf to the grid via a special two-way Chademo charging station. When not being driven, the car remains plugged into the charging station and power is pulled out of the Leaf's battery pack when grid demand requires it. Determining when power could or should be withdrawn from the battery pack was down to the software inside the intelligent charging and energy management system at the Mobility House. It monitored the frequency of the local power. When there was a dip in frequency, it was a sign that the grid was under heavy load and thus extra power was added from the car's battery pack. When the frequency of the electricity rose back up and thus demand had dropped, the car simply stopped providing power. As part of the trial project, the Mobility House was able to earn money from the electricity it pushed back to the grid via its Nissan LEAF. And so, after several months of tests, it's been concluded that in the course of a standard week, around 8 kilowatt hours of power was supplied back to the electricity grid from the car. That's equivalent to around 1.14 kilowatt hours of electricity per day, or as much electricity as you'd put back into a Nissan Leaf's battery pack in nine and a bit minutes when you're charging at a standard domestic charging station. In total, feeding back that 8 kilowatt hours of power to the grid over the course of a week earned 20 euro for the project. Over the course of a year, that equates to around 1,040 euro, simply by keeping your car plugged in when it's at home. Now to the tough bit, the will it damage my car's battery pack bit. As I hope that you've already realised, transferring so little power to the grid in a single day not only means that power can be replenished super quickly, but it also represents a tiny impact on overall vehicle range. 
four or five miles worth for most people. Additionally, because that power is taken at a fairly low current rate, far smaller than the current drain your car's battery is subjected to under normal driving conditions, the impact on your car's battery pack really is negligible. That's because the slower you pull that power out, the less effect it has on the battery pack's overall lifespan. The project, held a success, has shown that letting your car provide power to the grid doesn't have to be bad for you or your car. And at the kind of power levels being discussed, it also has so little impact on range that you'd probably not notice it. But if you multiply the effect by hundreds of electric cars doing the same, well, then it could be a massive revolution in the way we store and use electricity. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or you didn't like it. Scribble a comment below, hit the notification bell. And if you want to support us, there are a whole host of links below to help you do just that. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.